For those joining us, this is the January 3rd, 2023 school board meeting. I failed to start the recording prior to the um, minutes of public comment and not the minutes, but the um, bills, but we will have the minutes posted for the meeting. And uh, we're just entering in the presentation related to uh, potential referendum. And go ahead, Mr. Trump. <clears throat> I thought it would be worthwhile to take kind of a, a half step back um, looking at the discussion that we had back in December 12th. This is a starting point. So I'm going to kind of jump back to that. Um, pull this up here. There would be two documents here I wanted to share with you. We started off looking at kind of a couple of different scenarios, one being probably more conservative in terms of what we were thinking or assuming, which would occur at the state level in terms of state funding going forward. And that was kind of scenario one, which is kind of the status quo based on history of the $200 per student kind of increase in the revenue cap, realizing we haven't had that now for, for two years. And then kind of a middle scenario, which was kind of a little bit more than that, was around $250. And then the third scenario was kind of looking at a scenario that was representative of Governor Evers, Evers' proposal that he put forward back in November, probably being the most optimistic look. And the discussion we had at that time was kind of starting with scenario one, we have our base projection. I think something interesting, Bill and I were discussing this, this morning, and Bill pointed out, I believe the QEO was passed in 1993, I believe. Correct. That was the year I graduated from high school. The first budgetary year was that subsequent 94, 95 budget year, I believe. That's the first year, right? And the per pupil increase, when they when they started the qualitative economic offer, that's what that QEO is. Governor Tommy Thompson put it into place. And prior to that, school boards could set their budgets or whatever their community wanted. So that's why in Wisconsin you have wildly different spending per pupil because it was based off of what you spent that year per pupil before you went into the QEO. And Elkhorn was not spending a lot compared to where that state average is. That's why our spending per pupil is lower in, in the very bottom portion in the state. And since that law was implemented, we haven't really passed a significant referendum to exceed that QEO level. So we've been very dependent upon what the state gives on a per pupil spending. Well, in 1994, the dollar amount, which think about it, 30 years ago, was pegged to the CPI or, or the inflationary rate was $194 per pupil 30 years ago. So when you're looking and then you just think from an inflationary standpoint, over the years when the QEO was put into place, they would increase that dollar amount per pupil based on what the inflationary rate was. Up until, I believe, Doyle's last budgetary cycle, he actually dropped that down. And then when Walker came in, they quit even attempting to keep up with inflationary rates and basically had the perspective you need more money, go to referendum. And so that's where even at $200, that's where I wanted to give some of that perspective that we've been, you know, in the good years when we were given $200, that doesn't even come close to keeping up with inflationary rates. That's why Wisconsin's gone from when the QEO was put into place, it was 11th in the country on 
on spending for education dollars. And now it's projected after this last budget cycle has been factored in, we'll be about 35th in the nation in spending on education. So that's why is that curve to give you that context 30 years ago two hundred dollars would have kept up with the inflationary rate based on school budgets back then um so i found that interesting when i never i didn't realize it was 194 all the way back in 95. all right go ahead bill sorry well I, maybe just to add to that quickly um because i think it's worth maybe sharing too how that looked um That gives you a sense of that yearly increase um, you know, going back to that 94, 95 school year. So you've got that $200. And at one point at this time, it was based on the March to March change in the consumer price index. But you still had some type of predictability of what that yearly increase was going to look like, really, until we had, which would have been at 10. When we had the reductions, and then since that time forward, it's really been kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. that's right Bill, can I ask you to share that screen? I have the two other pages printed out, but I don't see the the one you're talking about right now. My screen, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. So go to go to my tab, Bill. And then click on the share screen button to the left, one to the left. Yep. And then your entire screen. I have fund 10 and the 27 summary sheet printed out and the financial analysis. So I can follow along by that, but I can't see the screen. On that. So can you see the screen now? Yep, yep. Now I can see it. Thank you. Thanks for saying something. So, all right. I mean, years ago, to give some context, I asked Senator Nass is wonderful, I'll always come to the meetings, talk to the superintendents and so forth. We host a, a meeting here. And I asked him, I, I said, you know, couldn't you just peg the per pupil increase to the CPI like the state's done with the tuition rate for the universities? Yeah. And he flat out said, nope, absolutely not. They had worked for the universities because it reduced what their, because universities were going above what CPI increases were. And he said that basically in a nutshell, it's not a direct quote, if school districts need more money, you can go to work for them. That we're not, it's not even going to entertain the idea of pegging revenue limits to consumer price index. So based on a $200 increase, we took also talked about wages next year is an inflationary adjustments of about 4%. Our health insurance at 10%. Utilities, we're seeing an increase of about 5%. And everything else about 3.5% for next year. And then you see that carries forward um, for the following year, wages at 3.5 and then wages at 3.5 for the third year. And then that gives you some estimates in terms of the budget deficit that we'd be seeing the next three years um, based upon those estimates. So with that information, then, as we kind of look at, I'll pull this up here. We started plugging in exceeding the revenue cap numbers just to kind of see how that began to balance out on the budget and what the impact was for taxpayers. So again, no final decisions were made, but kind of how we left the discussion was this sheet, which included a $4 million increase in year one, another $3 million in year two, and another $2 million in year three. So the combined impact was $9 million over a three-year period, which could be phased in. That wasn't the sample questions, though. 
It was yeah, not. That was the discussion okay. we had. Because um, you had a total of seven. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're talking two different things. Okay. That's a great okay. question, Jane. Thank you. I'm going back to our discussion of the From board meeting on the 12th. Previously. When we were yeah. kind of plugging yeah. numbers so together. Okay. Because yeah. it's kind of how we left it. Okay. Okay. It, it wasn't any consensus or conclusion. It was just no, you're fine. I just was trying to catch up against it. Yeah. No, I'm glad. I'm glad yeah, the numbers. I remember these numbers. Okay. And then. When I saw the question, I thought, oh, that's less well, than what could, I thought we Yeah, you could just put whatever, whatever oh, number we decided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just plug in no, numbers no. to okay. show what they look like no. on the question. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, don't no. interpret that as a Thank you. judgment or anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. That's fine. Hey, I think, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead go. I, so, so the impact then over a three-year period, even if we use some debt service to offset the impact, End up being about two hundred ninety-seven dollars. Yeah, just under three hundred dollars. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's yes. kind of where we were at at that point. Again, there was no consensus. There was no, you know, this is where we want to do. It was just more where where do that look? The other thing that came up as a question, um, and I think if I remember, I was just here. You asked the question. Yeah. Was kind of like, well, what would this look like past three years? And of course, it depends on if you change the bar mood scenario. But if you assume for a moment that the revenue cap is going up two hundred dollars a student, which is less than two percent, and our expenses are about four percent, the deficits never really go away. Right. So after three years, you'll see that the numbers start going the other direction, even after a nine million dollar exceeding the revenue cap. And we face that for the decade that I've been here in the school district, every year we faced a projected deficit of about 800,000 to a million. Yeah. And we've closed that in large part because of the um, open enrollment yeah. revenue. Yeah. If we didn't have the open enrollment revenue, we would have right. had to have gone, because we've been talking about we're going to need to go to a recurring referendum for years, but we've been able to delay that, right. and delay that, and delay that. Right with that revenue being generated. I don't know how much more one space we even have in our brick and some of our buildings have space, but how many more students and families are able to drive the kids and um, some of our buildings are, are full to like where Tibbetts pretty much there's not very many grade levels that could even yeah. take an open enroll student. Um, over there. So that's, I think, in all these scenarios, we budgeted a zero student Correct. increase. So it's a little conservative on that, but it's not, that's an unknown quantity. You have to fill the gap of all the kids that are open enrolled that are graduating out right. every right. year. Each right. year. Every year, Correct. that's more and more. We have almost right. That's right. Right. That is true. <laughs> we have this 12th grade class that graduates. That last year was like short. Just to yeah. get back to like even, we open. need, this, this year, I think, is 115. Yeah. New open world students just to get to the CCA and yeah. the options. Yeah. So, so anyway, this is where we. I'm no, sorry. Thank you. No, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, um, in these scenarios, there is the flexibility in this spreadsheet. If there was something that the board wanted to look at and, and tweak, like you know the insurance projected rate increase or yeah. salary and wages, yeah. we can tweak that and it will. Calculate. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's what if, that yeah. What are we yeah. expecting for health insurance? Because that ten percent seems very low. Yeah. 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 Ten percent was a negotiated rate. That wasn't easy. How would you know? Yeah. But we don't, right? Yeah, because they were originally projecting what fifty percent. Yeah, based on our the other right. rate first look at based right. on the claim history, correct? But we were able to negotiate ten. Well, we really did down to about twenty nine percent because of our cap that we had in place with Humana, and then also the wellness component reduced it because our staff participated in the wellness program. Right. Then we ended up going to the high deductible, modified that that got us to ten percent. Got it. That's it's a combination. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what do you think based on our our known history with with our staff? Right. Right. I know we have older staff. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a battle to look right. at each year, right? Come up with the best scenario we can, and right. sometimes it's going to be 
Okay, I can either switch or it's higher deductible or a combination of both. So mm -hmm. um, I think the 10% is, is it's a minimum. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I think there's ways to, there are ways to adjust the plans to get to hopefully, I mean, you never know. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you never know. But I think there are ways to adjust the plan so it gets the 10%. percent you know, they come back with some other number. Like I said, switching carriers, which we don't like to do with as many employees as we have. It's a lot of paperwork, but in the long run, we don't have much of a choice because right. much of wise we're not no. able to just absorb huge increases in, in demand, but we're hoping to definitely not help insurance. Can we can we put it back to let's put it back to the numbers that you originally had there, which was what three two one is that you originally had there before uh, we changed? Four three two. Yes, yeah, four three two. Yeah. Three, two. Yeah. Before we adjusted them. Because we adjusted it just to find out, okay, what do we have to have here to make it zero, you know, positive, so it's not a negative number for the next three years. And as a reminder, if the state budget does come back and they say, yeah, we'll give the Evers dollar amount, the, the board, all this does is give a maximum a maximum. levy amount yeah. that the board is authorized to go up to. Yeah, right. It doesn't mean that the board has to go up to that. Board. Right. right. It, it almost goes back to the days before revenue cap, where, where the decision ultimately would rest with the board up until the, the amount that's authorized by the electors. Now, in the past, when they've passed what is it, the categorical aid, they've said, well, if you don't levy up to the maximum, then you don't get. So now, we if we didn't levy up to the maximum, well, then we would have to give, number one, we'd have to not look at the maximum, and then we'd also have to give back the money for the, the categorical pay at times. Yeah, if they had that in there. Yeah, originally the revenue cap was, was designed that so way, we, where if you didn't max out the revenue cap, you lost it and never got it back. Country. They, they quit but doing that. I was going to say, that's gone that's away. That's gone away. Okay. They, they, they corrected that okay. several years ago. We okay. got the issue that created the district. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we don't have the revenue levy all the way up to that number even if it passes. Um, well, this, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. So that's the number. Go down a little bit to where the, the yeah, right there. Up a little bit. You know, the scenario. So this is the scenario, scenario where, okay, we don't have a deficit in any of the years. Your original numbers were, were I, I swear they were three, two, one or something like that, which left, a, I think we which left a, uh, a deficit. The first in, two years. Two, did. Year two and year three. Is that right? Right, because there was about eight hundred thousand deficit on the first year. I think. We I think. Going to use, use debt. Yes, we were. Service. That was that was looking okay. at the impact in terms of the, the tax rate. Oh. That's where the eight hundred thousand. Um, and again, I changed these numbers on the sheet. I think it was sorry, so, right. so you've increased that debt right. service. Correct. Oh, okay, yeah. And then what I was trying to do here. Let me let me share with you the changes I made from that sheet. Okay. I I reduced the third year increase in wages from three point five to three percent. Simply okay. thinking three years down the road, inflationary. I don't know how we can sustain seventy percent for that length of time. Correct. Right. Let's target is two percent. So I would say. Yeah, I'd like, yeah, really I'd like to see even the 24, 25 come down to three. Let's or see even 2.5, you know? Well, we, can, we can use three. Um, what, what I'll do here is to, I'll just kind of highlight a few of these as we change. So, you know, so they know the change. Yeah. One, of the, <laughs> one of the things to take into consideration is, as well, how that um, health insurance and wages are all part of that benefit package. Right. And so some of the decisions, like this year, we were able to get down to that 10% with, there there was a minimal impact, but I believe there was a slight cost to staff as it related to their portion of what the premium cost is. So as health insurance goes up, it'll also eat into their salary compensation right. mm -hmm. and part of that too is if the board says well we can't because there isn't collective bargaining anymore if the board says you know five percent is all we can do for health insurance increase and do right. your best plan design modification 
then those expenses get passed on to whichever employees are participating in that. So it, at the end of the day, it all comes out of that same, those two factors are very tightly related for those who take the health insurance. Yeah. So one of the scenarios, and I was kind of working from maybe the reverse of, of looking at the impact and trying to reduce that to be less than a hundred dollars per year. Mm -hmm. and, and to make that work, and, and again, you get to a point where you're, you're kind of just playing with numbers. Um, what was the vision? I think if we change that to 483 that I am. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. That's what I like 183. And you're trying to get under that $100. Okay. Yeah. And increasing the amount yeah. of the debt service offset would have an impact of about $96 per 100000 the first year, 86 the second, and 49 the third. The combination would be still two hundred and thirty-one dollars. The total amount, though, is seven million, not nine million. Yeah. And what did that do to the deficit? Yeah, the deficit goes up. You're a little bit over a million. Then you're about a million dollars in the third year. And what's okay? What's the numbers? You're you're back at the seven. I've got. I got no, you're one. Four, three, three. It was. Health insurance can. Can you just scroll up for it? Do you want him to plug it in? So yeah. Can you plug in? Um, Which one? It is the same amount, though. Correct. Yes. It adds up the same, but the spread out was just different. Right. Yeah. It, never mind. The amount seems sure. the same. Okay. It's only seven million right now. Yeah. So it's it's seven, seven, yeah. Six. It's six. So we actually need more. Right. Right. And then, even if you change the mix here, let's just if you put seven here and zero and zero, yeah, you're still yeah. going to end up at the, the dollar same. Amount same. At the yeah, end of the yeah, year. yeah. We're doing the math in different years because we're yeah. trying to get under that 100, like you said. And I'm not saying this is correct or this is what no, you should do. I'm right, just right. trying to look at yeah. what's maybe a more palatable right to get to. Put will the, will the spreadsheet do negatives? Put the put the reference to zero. We don't, we don't pass. It doesn't pass. Right? Oh, in all three years? Yeah. All three years. yeah. Oh, I don't know if that's still bad. It's going to be a bad so, scroll down. <laughs> all right, so that's where it yeah. goes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's kind of scary. Now, adjust the, can you adjust the uh, wages negative? Negative? Yeah, just I'm, not, I'm not just doing this to I'm doing this to understand what what how that works. If it doesn't pass, where would have to be the well because because here's what here's the thing is eighty percent right. of the budget is right. in salaries right. and benefits. So right. the only way we're gonna balance right. the budget if the is to reduce the staff. Right. right. Either through so the start the layoffs that. or asking the staff yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I put zeros in to start. Seven. And then to maybe get to that. Now I still got health insurance at 10%. So, so. Negative 5%. So before we did that though, I'd just like to see maybe smaller increases, you know, rather than four. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. 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 I'm just doing this. Okay, so that would probably be, yeah. we could probably make that work. If, it's yeah. not the best, it's not monitoring. the solution that no, we want to it's do. A horrible I'm, scenario. I'm just saying that if we had to do something, right. that's and where we would be sitting, it's a negative 5%. And, we have to and if you wanted to balance those numbers, numbers, you'd have to go even more. You'd have to go more, right. but I think we could right. we right. could reduce our fund balance to cover those numbers, or just through Correct. other things, yeah. saving money here and there, yeah. probably make that work. Because I've seen, like I said, over right. the last decade, I've seen 800 million right we've made it up throughout yeah. the year I think it was in different yeah. ways yeah it was. because the numbers are budgeted conservative so i heard maybe plugging in different numbers though than, than the four and the 3.5 and the three yeah so what if we went to 
Yeah. Yeah. And then let's see what the tough soil is. Okay, we're still pretty high. Now we'll go to the referendum. Put in the three, two, one, which is six, nine. Yeah, I think you're right. Because I think that third year we were too tight. Yep. And I think Jason said the numbers and maybe changed to seven. Okay. Doable. No, still doable. No impact on the taxpayers. Oh, we know. Oh, we're under two hundred dollars. That's right. Well, I think we have to be clear on that too when we're communicating. That's based on a hundred thousand dollar assessment. And there's really no such thing as a hundred thousand dollars in Elkhorn. The me the median uh, home in Elkhorn is two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars right now. Um so I don't know if you want to break that down to the median uh what it would approximately be or per thousand. So people have a uh a more accurate because when they see that number and then the real number comes through, um, the reaction is not going to be very favorable. Uh, they're going to feel like we're used car salesmen. Um, the other thing with that, the other thing with that is it's it's a um, um, a cumulative um, cost. So it's it's just like interest rates. Um, it, it, it's additional each year, and when they only see one number. Um, they think it, that's it, but they have to realize that it's year one plus year two plus year three um, that it's going up. It's not just that that one there. Um, and a question that's been asked of me out in the public is, when is one of our referendum um, balances being absolved? You mean our debt service? Yeah. Well? Yeah, for, for a past referendum, because uh, their concern is uh, reoccurring, open-ended public trough, opposed to can we just bridge it until uh, funding has balanced out because I don't know what, what the earliest one would be, the middle school? Or? Middle school just was paid off. That just got paid off. Yeah. So okay, when, when the next one would be paid off, and can we just hurdle to that point and then reevaluate? And, and I said, I don't have the answers. I, you know, it's way above me. And another concern is households have to have rainy day accounts. And I believe that's what our, um, our uh, fund balance uh, is. And we have to show due diligence in our expenditures when we basically are carrying a 11, $12 million dollar uh, rainy day fund. Um, we need to dip into that a little bit too to assure them that we're conscientious about uh, the dollars that are there. I, I think the reason I used a hundred thousand dollars, Paul, is simply because it's an easy factor for people to right. for taxes. Yeah, I, I understand, but I think when we go to speak to the public, we have to. Uh, very clearly tell them while we're doing our basis on a hundred, the reality is you'll have to look at your own to see the impact because that's just an easy way to do math. Um, but the realistic is for you, that's not going to be the impact. It'll be greater. You'll have to figure out on your own what it's going to be. Oh, but I look back at our previous referendums. We, we also created kind of a, a chart with a, calculation where people could plug in their own hand their own home value and it would calculate the tax impact right? okay i'm just saying from what i've heard i just want to make sure that we don't get labeled as used car salesmen <laughs> oh, <we're still> <laughs> 40 percent of the voting public will probably label us as used car salesmen okay. um <clears throat> i think paul's point of that we have to <coughs> Losses and thing is, is probably, I mean, Ed said the same thing at the last meeting, and I think it was a good yeah. point. Um, 
But the, the thing is, is we don't want to run the fund balance down too much because right. the fund balance is there from major emergencies but, too. I mean, we can't, right. it would be pretty irresponsible of the board to run that down mm -hmm. to but, the point where we don't have a fund balance because right. we have to have money to run yep. the district. To have that impacts our bond rating, that Building impacts yes. our short-term borrowing that we yeah. didn't have to. Yep. Well, this is our first year that, that we, we didn't do the short term. We yeah. haven't had right. to do a credit right. line. We don't want to go back to right. now we're paying that kind of interest right. because and, we and get paid. Now we did not two years ago. Yes. I mean, do you really want to go back to three banks and find out? Right. Yeah, that they're going to charge us to no. load us. For I'm okay with running the fund balance down a little bit, but right. I'm not okay with running it down significantly because no. it takes a long time to build it up. Yep. If we were to run it down dangerous levels I, it could be yeah. like i said it could be a decade before you could build it back up and even then you might not be able to and then we might have some sort of catastrophic failure where we have to and i'm not saying something dangerous but we might have like a major piece of equipment that fails like yeah i don't want to go back to three banks don't have to pay for it we have to borrow it for right, right, interest on right. It. right so either way there's costs to anything that we do yeah Right. And, and I mean, I understand that as well, but, you know, as, as people speak, they're like, well, in a personal uh, situation in our family funding, um, we have a rainy day fund. And once that's expended, we have to extend ourselves to a home equity line of credit and things like that. So they're looking at it from the scenarios they've lived already and they want, and they want uh, us to look at it the same way. And it's, I know it's different and I understand why we have to hold a balance, but we also have to be careful that ours looks so grandiose compared to what the general population in our community has right now. Compare it to a business, not right. a personal home finance. Right. And right. when we're employing almost 700 people and the responsibility of what the business, which is the school district is doing, I mean, there's a lot more moving pieces than personal finances. Right, I understand that, but trying when we go out to speak is what I'm trying to say is, these are the, the visions and concerns people have out there. And we have to be very clear on that because um, they have to make concessions. And the reality is the school district is a commodity of the community and we have to play by their wishes. Right, and Paul, I, I think if we were like DeForest or even some of our neighboring districts whose fund balances were over 50% of their annual budget, um, we're just around what percent, Bill? 24, 20, about 25%. About 25% is right at that ideal recommendation um, for school districts. So, and, and we're just to the point where we don't have to pay any loan borrow. That's how I explain it to the yeah. public and the community. If you want the district to be in a situation where we have to pay a loan borrow and pay interest every year just to make payroll, we can get to that point, but we're not in an exorbitant fund balance piece. I think there's lots of comparisons and I'm very comfortable articulating that. I think what I hear from a lot of people is they complain about the state having a surplus yet right, right. paying interest on for roads and right. borrowing more right. money. Yeah, in, in fact, that was brought up too. If every referendum going out this uh, spring uh, were addressed to the state, the surplus the state has would cover the entire referendum requests, which is pretty tough because, I mean, community members are saying, do you know what percentage of your tax roll goes to the school district? And they're giving me theirs. Well, if they live in town because there's other expenditures for the city and things like that, it's like 37%. Out in the townships, it's 55%. And I'll tell you, you we're going to have a lot of resistance. I don't care how we do the numbers. And I just want to prepare you so that we have answers when people are talking and questioning um, that we can get them to understand from the district's perspective, not necessarily it's exactly the same as a household or yours but i also understand their concerns is the less i am able to hold on to um the bigger changes it is in our lives 
So for so long, you know, by trying to find ways to bring students in through open enrollment to generate revenue. Um, and I think that, we've done that more successfully. Everyone doesn't understand every how that district. works, you know, that we generate <laughs> revenue through open yeah. enrollment. This right. doesn't cost us much to educate us what we bring in for each student. Um, we've tried to do it in different ways, but I think I think we're just when you start seeing those numbers, those deficit numbers, we just can't cover them with just the fund balance or with just with students. When I look back, it's a product of us yeah. not. It's not a product of us just overspending. It's just a. Yeah. It's a product of. I mean, we're one of the lowest spending districts in the state of Wisconsin per per, per pupil. Yeah. It's just a function of the fact that, you know, I mean, everything inflation costs went crazy on us and. And we haven't had an increase for the last two years. And yeah, we had the COVID funds, and that's the first thing that's going to be said. But the COVID funds were one time. They, right. Once we used them up, they're gone. Looking yeah. back in 2022, between April and November, I think I counted there was over 90 school operational referendums across the state. Yeah. And that was 22. And, and you know, at this point for 23, there's a number of them that are you know kind of at the same point we are, where we're talking about it and i wish we didn't have to go to referendum at all to be quite right. honest because yeah. it'd be like yeah. because i'm um, i mean like all of us we're gonna we're gonna have to answer hey, yeah, the first point nobody wants to go yeah. nobody, nobody wants to do it i don't know if there's but any we have like i said we have a responsibility to finance the district right um and the way it is there it can be done but it's gonna i showed you how you're gonna do it right it's negative five percent right. that's gonna right. affect class sizes it's gonna affect yeah. Our staff, we could ask them all to take a pay cut, but then we're going to lose some of our best staff to yeah. neighboring districts that have passed referendums. Yeah. Um, and then we can we can do that. Certainly, I mean, there's if we have to make that decision, we'll make the decision. But ultimately, what we're doing is we're not saying, okay, we're going to spend another six million dollars. We're saying right. to the public, do they want to spend another six million dollars? We get the same one single vote that they everyone else in the whole right. school right. district gets. Right. We yeah, we put it on the ballot, but we're not the ones that make the decision. So I mean, the ultimate the the question for them is: Do you want us to spend six million dollars more and keep things roughly the way they are, or do you want us to make significant reductions? We can do that. We can do it either way. It's, it's a choice. We have to do it either way. We have to. Yep. And in looking at those increases, and I know we will lose, but, but every year this happens, we will lose some quality staff members with the 3% increase because CPI is, was, what was it, 8.1% last year, and there will be competing districts, other entities that we have a very good reputation. They love to hire from Elkhorn because they want to bring that culture, they want to bring that background and that experience. And, They'll have opportunities, and it just we won't be able to keep up with that. Uh, the advantage there's pros and cons with 75% of our staff being in that lane four, their compensation yeah. is at a right. decent level. But you know, those the districts for high quality, well known staff, they're, they're willing to jump above that. And, and there are some districts that I know they're, they'll be close to CPI on their pay increases and so on. And for some of them, they can afford that. If, if your average age of your employees is 35 as opposed to 47, yeah. then your compensation base is much lower than what our compensation base is. Well, we've always been very supportive of hiring the best person for the job, right. not necessarily just the youngest right. person. Mm -hmm. They're well on this. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that should, that should continue. Should be something. Yeah. Right, but you're right, Matt. In that I, sense, I think from that. from what I'm looking at it as, okay, we want to reduce. We're going to reduce this. Yeah, we might lose some. We might lose people either way. But the way I look at it is, I'd rather have less of an increase, and mm -hmm. hopefully that you know the, the referendum is able to pass, than to have to ask for reductions. Right. Right. Or to do layoffs. I mean, I this district has never laid anyone off that I don't that I know of. I don't think ever. And to do so would be 
a big deal in this community. Or deaf and hard hearing interpreter, which there's that when they don't have a school. Oh, and it's just like that. Thoughts? Other people? Other thoughts other than me? So, if, if there were layoffs, and this is just outside thinking. I don't know. What would that impact be on the district as well as far as future bill? It's kind of like the insurance, uh, you know, that goes with the, I don't know, the whatever benchmark they put you on for. Because I know years ago with Mr. Serpy, we talked about that is if so many people are unemployed, then your rating changes. And that's an ongoing, everlasting impact on the budget as well. Um, yeah, you're talking about unemployment insurance, maybe, Paul? I don't remember exactly what it was, but he was saying, you know, like, if three people get laid off, not only do we lose that uh, portion, but then there's a incurring cost from that point forward uh, for, I don't know if it was insurance, but some type of rating that then falls back into the expenses that are needed to be handled by the district. So you've lost on both ends. Have we looked at what that would do when we talk to the public too? And I mean, you sh we sure don't want to lose teachers through that avenue. That's for sure. Um, hopefully, we can, hopefully we can keep their wages comparable. But more importantly, is their insurance. We have got to, you know, care for the sailors or the ship sinks. I would strongly recommend. We've used attrition over the years as those opportunities have come up to help us balance those deficits meaning when someone's retired or someone's moved away we look at the position we analyze do we need this or not right now. and we've reduced in just about every single building um you know in staffing and some other buildings where programs have grown we've expanded staffing um but i would very strongly recommend you know, the scenario where it said negative five, negative five, no employee would like to hear that you're going to have to take a pay cut, but I would strongly recommend and detour any talk of or any scenarios of layoffs because that creates a huge vicious cycle because it bumps up class size, it reduces yeah, services yeah. or programs, yeah, yep. then you lose you you fail to keep your kids that are here right and you start to lose the open enrollment revenue that's generated it really creates just this awful vicious cycle that yep. spirals yeah. down another district probably too that's yep. 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 yeah 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 so good entities when they hit hard times they may ask all employees to right. take a reduction in, in pay or something along those lines but we've maintained and this has attracted employees to this district that we in Elkhorn have never had to lay off a single employee due to you know financial reasons, with the exception of the death and hard period. And that's not financial, there's no cost right. there. And so um, that is that stability. Teachers like stability. They don't yeah. like, they're adverse to high risk, they're adverse to risk. That's part of why they're in education is they love what they're doing, but they also like that consistency and that awareness that their job's going to be there. So any talk of layoffs or if yeah. the referendum doesn't pass, we're going to have to do this, it's going to impact class size. That just has a, you'll have good teachers fleeing yeah. sooner yeah. Oh, yeah. rather than later. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. not productive. So I'd encourage us to really no, be no. careful in how we work those, yeah, those no, things. But we do need to know that. that that's, you know, that's a possibility. I mean, we can carry it for, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're not going to make any like rash decisions. I mean, we can carry it for a year and make decisions. If it doesn't pass, there's, we can look at other ways. We can look at. Right, because the biggest impact isn't going to be this next school yeah, year. The biggest the year impact is going to be so the I mean, year after that. There's yeah. things we can do. Yeah. I don't yeah. Yeah. We have time. We don't need to just panic, we're trying but, to yeah. ultimately, get ahead of the game. Yeah. Ultimately, we got to do it somehow. In, right. We got to balance it at some point. Right. It's going to come to a head if it, I mean, if it doesn't pass. And in looking at that scenario, it sounds like is there a, I don't know if you want to do a straw poll or 
say, I know we're not voting on the actual dollar amount, but is there a general consensus on that dollar figure of, I think it's at six million, six right, million right now? We're, we're at six right now. We're and six. Where's, well, what's the impact right now? Well, well, I, think, I think I'd like us to spend a little bit more time to look at, you know, when you're changing these percentages, yeah. and then we're all going back to how much it's costing our taxpayers. Right. You know, maybe we should have a little matrix done of how really significant is it. Because when we presented at 4%, you know, range raises, right. you know, 4 and then 3 and 2. Right. And that's going to be part of the presentation on how we mm -hmm. came up with the numbers. So, right. yeah. you know, I don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot when we don't have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's worthwhile for us to just spend a little time together while we're all together tonight and just do a simple matrix. I can make notes if you want, which is fine. Um, but the point is, how, how significant is 322 compared to 432? I mean, no, are you talking wait, about percentages? Percentage of wage wages. Increase. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, where are we is at? Is it right so now? significant? Where are we that at with inflation? Where are we at? That's listed so, at yeah. 322. Yeah, we're at 322 yep. right now. Okay. Okay. Which, which shows these kind of negative numbers, I guess. Okay. Which we thought were tolerable. Yes. Matt, is that we still good with that? We've had that the last few years. The last few years. Okay. We've had that third number, one point one time. So go back down and make it four, four, three, two. How many years have we been at that two percent? wage increase. It seems like ever since last, I've been on the board. Last year we were above two. What would we do last year? For wage? Yeah. Yeah. Or it feels like the last six years. Well, yeah, I was just going to well, say. Well, no, no, I'm sorry, not last year. Last year was at yeah, 4. It was a 7, while, but CPI but was, was right around there. Right. Yeah. Right. Like it's always the last been five years. years. I agree. It's yeah. right always been right two. around 2%. Yeah. 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 We didn't know what was going to happen. In 2019, right. Right. Yeah. Well, we then we come back and we did later after. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So we did. Yes. Yeah. Right. Wages haven't been Contracts frozen since they were frozen when Act 10 first came about for a year. We two froze years. the scale, but everybody got a one percent. Right. So everybody got a yeah. But when you freeze the scale. People yeah. interpret that as a freeze. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. We need to we learn if you don't, you gotta let them move on rows. <laughs> <laughs> don't freeze them and just increase right. the scale. Right. Right. Yeah. Scroll down to see what the tax well, effect is. Yeah. Well it doesn't it doesn't change. No, it doesn't change because yeah. it's the, still the same number. It's it, just it, it would right. change that if we change the referendum number. Okay. Right. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it just changes the deficit number. Okay. <laughs> right. And I don't, I don't, I mean, I know what CPI is. I know what I'm hearing. I, yeah, what are you guys that high. are working in private industry? What are you seeing from? Wage increases? Yeah. All over the board. Yeah. yeah. A lot more than 4%. What did you say? There's no Rationale. I would agree. It's so rational. There's no rational at this point. Yeah. So when we changed the uh, percentages, the four three two, and then four three three, and that all that really did was changed where we're spending our money, but it didn't change how much money we have in the bank. Correct. Our deficits would still be the same, and it's just within the internal structure where the money's being spent. No, it's just those changes, Paul, it changes the deficit. Right. The deficit so increases. Correct. The, the 1.2 and the first year. The, the 322 was more palatable on, on the deficit yeah, than the 432. Right. So, Paul, you want to see something added instead of 1.2 and 1.1, have something added to the third year? Keep going now, though. <laughs> I, I don't know what I want. I, I'm just trying to understand uh, how all the numbers jive together. And, and I don't know, just looking at that, what's the total request of monies we're asking? And then how we spend it is what we're, we're playing with. But the total 
asking of the, the community, I guess, I, I would like to come up with a, a ceiling, where are we, and then figure that out. And then we adjust within the, the confines of our building where we have the expenditures. So right now, it, it's six million is what we're looking at capping it at. That's the numbers that are floating at this point. At, at this point, that's what we're looking at, right? And then how we expend it, that's, that's a whole different topic, right? And as we play with the numbers, it isn't really changing the 6 million per se, it's where it's being distributed inside the, the matrix. Yeah, ultimately, ultimately yeah. it's wages. That's where the adjustment's being made because that's 75% of the budget. Correct. Correct. Right now, that's exactly what we're doing. But I mean, it hasn't changed anything. Other, I mean, as far as what we're asking the community to increase. No, it just changes the deficit on the other end oh. if we increase. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's what I was kind of trying to to, to see because output could still change. But I don't know. I just don't want to see too many changes that really I don't understand. But as long as I know that the bank is six million, and then what that does to the overall impact, that's fine. But I don't want the numbers to be changing what the asking uh, price is. Paul, I, I know Bill had sent an email to our internal staff, and I don't want to jump ahead to the two different question structure, but it may be important to look at on this chart while we're here. One of our concerns, you use that reference of, you know, we don't want to look like used car salesmen. That was kind of the impression that we got on the complicated nature of trying to explain right. those dollar amounts yeah, increasing over a three year end. period. Yep. Do you feel like we're better off just saying, look, it's six million that we ultimately need. We're just yep. asking yep. for six million. Yep. Yes, that's kind of what I'm oh, agreeing. And, and one tax impact yeah, that's right. and yeah. right. it's done. That's, that's right. correct. Yeah. So, so when you gave us the two sample ones, this is right and here. then you added the numbers, yep. that yes. was a lot. It's too confusing when you add yeah, way too confusing. Confusing. It was like this amount, then this amount, but wait, we're still adding that first amount. Yeah, it looks like and so then that, yeah. And that was the example of, like, I think, Oregon school. No, and I went and through a, that, that was, entire yeah. sample from Oregon that you sent, yes. yeah. and there was some great Q&A in there. But <laughs> so No, there was. There's no, some great Q&A. Everyone I talked to said the yeah. same thing. Yeah, no, it, yeah, no, it, it, yeah. I went through the whole thing during our yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, the sample two, when I read it again this yeah. morning, I was like, yeah, yeah that's, that's a lot. That's and a lot. And these have both been reviewed the language yeah. and context by Bear. Um, I had a sentence that I really wanted in that they said we can't do. Okay. Um, <laughs> so due so to due to bigger. two years of a zero dollar revenue oh, right. increase, the oh, school right. that the yeah. they said we can't. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> like, I thought it brought some context. But can you plug in, Bill, on that spreadsheet just what it looks like if the six million were just in year one? Yeah, I mean that'd be interesting. Okay, we'd have a because it builds a little bit more of a potential cushion. If needed down line, I would suspect. So if we got it all in one year, yeah. The impact's so right there, like but it, it may prolong that deficit because it builds a little bit, which could buy some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will give us more in year four. Yeah, it, it will do that. You're absolutely right. right. Four, we don't know. It's too hard to yeah, project it's too hard out. Project it. I mean, I, I hate to do projections off the end of years. So just yeah, you have no idea what's going to happen. You hardly know what's going to happen in one year. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's true. Though. Well, how many times do we review the budget? It still puts us at a deficit in that. <laughs> and we still don't know. <laughs> yeah, because the number year. is still the same. Trying to figure out something. <laughs> oh, sure. But, okay. It's just like, we're in the positive. Right. Right. positive so, yeah. It does yeah. help your fund down. You could change the money earlier. All right. Yeah. You could change how so my question was in the question you want me to jump back to the question can we can we say can it be worded to say up to <laughs> we tried that million? we tried that 
You can't. You it's can't a great idea that, that we try this. You can't say that. Okay. No, we can say that in our literature. We can say that on a so one page, but we can't, but can't, you can't word it in, in the question. question. You can't explain right. to them if we don't need it. Not we'll do our due diligence. Yeah, that's not the question because they have to follow legal statutes. So we've already okay. reviewed that with Corals and Brady, and that's the exact question we had. Plus, okay. Jason had some other things to include, and they said no to that too. Okay. So going back, you said this out. Uh, what was the feedback strongly? towards sample one? Um, I'd say mostly just everyone pretty much said sample one is much more clear. Yes. Yeah, it is. I think just yeah. about everyone's right. That. Yeah, we need to make And reading that, it, it, it also has an implication of $6 million beginning in 23-24 school year and reoccurring purposes. Could we have $6 million for the year 23 through 26 and then go from there. So basically we're locking a window in to spend that $6 million. And then after that, it could be recurring or come back to another question or something. But right now that looks like for me and uh, I'm sure a lot of people that would read that, so that's six million in 2023, six million in 2024, six thousand two twenty-five, six six million in two twenty-six, and it's just a continuum um, forever. So really, for in the next three years, it's eighteen million. That's correct. You're right, but it does. It's in perpetuity. That six million dollar amount would still keep us well below the state average on spending per pupil as well. Right. Um, you know, just to get to the state average, we have to add 11 million. Yeah, we'd have to add 11 million to get to the current state average, current which state will be different. Which we're not asking for. No. No. Yeah. The, other port, the other portion of the question where there is a little flexibility is what's highlighted there in, in, the bold. in bold. And that's kind of capturing the purpose. So, I, I like what you have. That we took that from a combination of looking yeah. at sample questions, to be honest with you, and put that together. I mean, class size is a big one, staffing mm -hmm. is a big one, safety is a big one. I mean, I think they all need to be in there. I mean, the disappointing piece, I, I wish we could say expanding instructional programs, reducing class sizes, and yeah, which we but it, it's not. We'd have to go for just a dollar amount, exactly. to, right? And those are, you know, that's those are things that. I you think mean we reducing all like class size? Yeah, this doesn't yeah. go. This is just maintaining. Right. I think yeah. we'd all like to reduce class sizes. Right. We all like. There's other right. things that I'd like to do. But to I'd like to bring the yeah. the four K teachers in as staff yes, for the district. I've been after that for yes. probably a decade. I would agree. But the cost of that is five hundred thousand right. dollars. So. Yep. We you know, do we add, 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 you know, I mean, you're adding that in the, and bringing 4K into our program. And, you know, 500,000 dollars isn't it's not a lot, but it's a lot to us. Sure, it's a lot. But the thing is, is that every year. I've I mean, never liked the fact that we, that the 4K no, teachers have to be outsourced. Have to be outsourced. Right. They would bring they have no control over their quality. Program. Right. They don't have any benefits. No, but, you're absolutely you know, right. I, I just, it's bothered me for a long time, but I also know that $500,000 is a lot of money in our budget and we can't just Yeah, but we're losing kids elsewhere that are going out of district for 4K. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I did it. Yep. Yeah, I did too. So there are other things that I wish we could do and I wish we could say, <laughs> okay, we'll, 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 go after, we'll go after yeah. movement. You know, we, we really should be, you know, yeah. if we want to do those things, then we would have to ask for more. And, yep. It's, it ultimately comes down to what can what can the community support, and you know what can we reasonably ask? Because two hundred dollars per hundred thousand, I mean, there's people that, I mean, it's a lot, lot of people. It's going to be a lot of money. Yeah, yeah it's going to be four hundred fifty five hundred dollars for an average home. home. Yeah, and I wish you know, I wish more people, but I. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Would there be 4K is one that's come up for the 10 years that I've been here. Would there be for that dollar amount that we need to bump it that 
interesting. goodwill or feeling. Yeah. I mean, it, it's at least something exciting that, it, that it's that not just status quo. Spanish. Yep. Um, is that the number? I don't know if it was. Well, it, it was. The was last time I heard that was because we talked even that we don't have the space. Yeah, where do we where do we put those classrooms? Oh, we, there, 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 there is no classrooms to put them in the building. So they would have to stay in the. That's just making right. the teachers. No, it just makes the staff. Right. Got it. Our staff. We would have to build like an early childhood center or you find a space or something. But I don't think I'm ready to pull the rug up from the the daycare the daycare centers either. No. But but that would bring we would get more stability in our teaching staff if they're additional in place because we have a competitive merge. Are, are the facilities okay with that? Has there been a conversation? I've only I only had a conversation with one informally. Their concern would very much be kept full, meaning right. Right. if we absorb they're the cost of that, yeah. that they're still getting benefit. They put it. Keeping their revenue that they need minus perhaps the portion that was yep. going to the, the teacher. But here's the other kicker to the situation is the 4K program also generates revenue for the district. It is current. Oh, yes. Yeah. It is it current. It increases the student health. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's, been, there's negative drawbacks in the Right. I liked your thought though of adding 4K into it. To, it's been a long time. Wish. It would be a goodwill. <laughs> I and almost I don't. don't have don't, any kids no, neither do I. Think, <laughs> I think <laughs> right? <laughs> but teenagers are older, probably. <laughs> um, but for those that do, I mean, we want to be attractive to the young families. Yes. And we want to bring them in early because then they stay here. Right. Because once they leave, they stay elsewhere. Right. Good example of that. Yeah. I think it's, um, I don't want to come back next year on another ballot exactly. asking for it. No. We're going to do it. I mean, it's you nice to do it all at once. It. Yeah. I'm trying to try, but it's a decision. So how much do we have to add, Bill? Seven hundred, so two point one two. I have not done any detail. Uh, yeah, we're just like throwing this out there right now. Like I said, last time I heard. It's a thing. Five minutes. Between five and seven. I mean, that's yeah. But that's how much we can get there. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a and it is just has to be a kind of an. And so I think we're fairly safe at that dollar amount. Though, because we're looking at two four. It's about 6.5 teachers. 6.5 teachers. Um, yeah. But so it really depends on what's their years of experience, where would they fit on our salary schedule? Do they take the insurance or not? Is it family or is it single? And we won't know all of that. And so we do that. But I do think that figure between five to um, 700 definitely, I, I'm extremely confident would absolutely cover us. 500, I think we could probably come in around where we needed to be if we're looking at that current size of mm -hmm. um, that six and a half teachers. Room. Just looking at that on a full time expense. Mm -hmm. One of the things I often hear is how Williams Bay's so great, it's so small class sizes, but how much does Williams Bay get for, for student teachers? I think their revenue limit is 3,500 more per pupil than us, almost 4,000. So multiply that times. Williams Bay does full day 4K. Um, Gallon and Darien started full day 4K. Gallon and Darien said 6,000 per people more than us on their spending. And which is ironic because I spoke to a board member from Delvin recently and you know, he said, Oh, I wish we had money like Elkhorn. <laughs> <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? I wish I had money like Delvin. <laughs> Can you imagine what we could do with $6,000 per people? Oh. Oh out. It's a lot. This is looking at less than two thousand dollars. This still puts us about four thousand per pupil behind Delaware. Yeah. 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 Ye
But I think it's a testament to if, if these districts have this impression that Elkhorn has all this money, yet we're in the bottom yeah. 10 percent of the time for districts in the entire state. And we look good. We're the highest. Yeah. We're the highest. Well, it just means right. that we, the kids are. So, we've been able to do yeah. a lot more. Yeah. With a lot less, and we've been creative and perception is innovative. Yeah. Like one of those Ferrari kit cars from the 80s, as long as you don't get too close. <laughs> 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 In any case, yeah. we got to get to some sort of number, so I, I don't know, know where. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I don't know. But that's where I, I would probably say 500 or so. I think we could do the 4K for 500, 600, but I am very. When do we have to have this number? Well, well, technically, resolutions need to be approved by the 24th of January. So, so we have one more board meeting before we have to. But I can tell you the municipalities and the clerks are right. hoping that we would do it sooner. Where do I have it for the next board meeting? Sure. Like, like, next week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have next some Monday. pair of resolutions yeah. for the board to consider by next board meeting. Yeah. Did you come to some consensus? Right. Tonight? Right. Paul, what do you think about adding the 4K to this? Well, I, I think it's a, a good idea, uh, especially if we can, you know, convince the people that it's the money's going to that, um, and and they know what the the, the ceiling is. I, I I think the 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 key is getting them in early, having them have success and comfort within our district to build upon moving forward. If we miss out on that we aren't going to get them at, at any point. So I think it's critical that we do start there at the, the base. I, I do want to be clear. It would not mean the 4K is in the school building. So right. right. All facilities do that. Right. But it would be a, a start in at least having the employees and grant right. them the a equitable wage. Direction. Control right. Right. Yeah. Not, that, not that any of the no, teachers are no. low quality. Not, or right. That. I'm but, just... I'm just saying that. Yep. But when we strive to have right. everything be uniform between the three elementary schools Consistency. and mm -hmm. yeah, and the pods and the middle school, I mean it just brings yeah. it together. Yeah, I think it brings a collegial community amongst the, the staff there. So they're all working with each other for a common cause. So I, I think it is critical. So what, um, now we got to put the number back to the six million that we were at and add, I just added. Oh, the point, oh, the five? Yeah. Okay. Did you add in the spreadsheet? Yeah, let's see it on the spreadsheet. Yeah. You spent so much time on that spreadsheet, you want to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to move on. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I can just close this for now. And I know. <laughs> well, my battery might be dead, so. <laughs> it's probably going to. <laughs> that would be a big one. That would be a big one. I like it. <laughs> so it goes up basically $17. Yeah. Right. Per 100,000. What, 190 something? We were at 198. Yeah. 198? Okay, yeah. Um, and that is that with the what's the percentage on the wages? On that? Oh, it's a four three two. Can we put it back to three two two? That won't change the impact. No, right? I, I understand no, that. It'll change the, it'll change the deficit. So it's a positive. So. Yeah, which. Oh, because of the. Yeah, that's what's. But that's the whole first year. But you do have that potential. The board could under levy or the board could save for that rainy day. Correct. On the deficit down the road in year one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have to spend the 6.5 the Correct. first year. So. Correct. No, you changed it in the second year. You changed Correct. it to 6.5. When you said the 500,000, is that per year? Or yeah. You... So do we have yeah. to take it up 1.5? to cover the three years 
of bringing? It you know, automatically. No, it rolls forward, it becomes the base for the next year. It becomes the base for the next year. So it's always the five hundred. So it's zero point five in perpetuity. Yep. Is this spreadsheet attached to the mill rate so we can see what that looks like on the mill rate? It is. I pulled that out last time. I was like, man. I had it somewhere too. <laughs> but you did. You pulled it out like two, three weeks ago. And I was like, oh. we used to have it right here. <laughs> he spends a lot of time on this too. So, yeah. <laughs> so it does keep the mill rate under 10 as well. Yeah. I mean, it does go up in these scenarios, but if, if you look at the historical, <laughs> you go back five years, it still would be below what it was five years ago. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the other detail. <laughs> Unless there's other questions in the spreadsheet, I was going to jump back to the question. That's fine. Um, well, because you would need to add that to the, yeah, you would need to add the additional 4K. And I, I think adding that 4K portion into the question, because the reality is what, what we're doing or what the school board's doing by <coughs> voting, whether to go to referendum and how to go to referendum is your Voting to give the community an opportunity to voice their support or non support. Yeah, we're not spending six minutes on the contract. That's, that's right. a, and that's a, and I've heard it's probably the one of the larger topics that I've heard from year to year that they usually, though it's most people probably don't know that the 4K teachers aren't necessarily district employees unless they've had a good group. Right. Right. But, no, I don't think they do. Oh, okay, yeah. But it is Until there's a problem. It's probably the most common reoccurring one that I've had over, which is where I can. So what's what in 2022? Oh, not full day for K. We'll we'll have to work on the wording. We'll work on that. I just want to have yeah. something in there. With that. Sure. Because I think we'd want to include that on mm -hmm. here. Yes. Yeah. That would be double that amount or more, and they don't have the space to run full day. Okay. Um, because you'd have to have the space to have the kids there to be the entire day. And the state doesn't give us any money for a full day. Oh, okay. Well, most of the teachers teach a full day. They just have different boards. They have two oh, classes right. on a day. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill, in 2022, do you know what the average referendum was? Like from the 90, from, from the 90 that you just <laughs> yeah. I mean, the highest probably was Verona. I think theirs was 19 million. Yeah, yeah. theirs was high. And for recurring, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I guess it's that's been like 500,000 to 19 million. Okay, for the Oregon, yeah, Oregon, which is about our size. So, kind of look at what are the districts on our size. Yeah, yeah. theirs was was it eight or nine? I think theirs was eight or nine. Yeah, yeah. because. Yeah. Yeah. Theirs was higher. There's yeah. an hour and a half. It seems like it was you know, more than that. It was like 11 million maybe over three years. Yeah. In the summer, it was 11. 11. Oh, and they, they range wildly. So, content like Wood School only has 200 students. They right. passed a $2 million referendum. Yeah. You factor that. That would be like us passing Rogan Town 40 million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sunbury so was 9 million. People. Yeah. Um, you know, districts around, I know there's a district east of us that's looking at a referendum. Mm -hmm. and I think the number they're looking at was 8 billion. Okay. And that's a district that would be similar size to us. I think it's with the letter D. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they haven't decided. I just know right, that's right. the numbers. And they're 12 yeah. miles. <laughs> yeah, they have to On that way, 11. <laughs> Thank you. And then it's hard to compare because Lake Geneva, when they did this, they're in high school. Yeah. Students. Correct. So it's it's hard to you'd have to, the most accurate way to look at it would be the dollar amount per student. Yeah. Well, I'm comfortable with the that. Kevin, you have Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. That's right. I think for me, I think it's we're going to add it. This would be a good time to 
I agree. I, just, I won't be here next year, but I don't want you guys to have to go back next year and go, oh, I wish I would have. Yeah, no, I, think, I think it's a great yeah. it's a good idea that you brought it up. I mean, I will be here next year, but not on this side of the table. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good Yeah, we're going to add it. Um, yeah, I agree. And it gives, it gives some added value mm -hmm. versus the status quo. Yeah. So that's all we're doing. No. What do you think, Kevin? I know how many voters to say. Yeah. So finalize the referendum question for the next there, Monday. Yep, yeah, there'll be two questions for the board to consider. One would be calling for the referendum, right. which would be April 4th. And the second one would be the question. Which will look something just like this with those dollar amounts with the full day 4K, I think can't be worded differently. Do so we ever need to go over the draft communication pieces with some of the agenda or rules that we got for that? We have a, a, a committee uh, that's kind of looking at communication. Jason, myself, um, Jody Espen, um, Katie Hoffman, and, and John Ansel. So we're looking at kind of like a fact sheet. And we'd be able to share with people possible boards we have at the schools. Mm -hmm. Obviously, updating our website, and, and we are looking at kind of the work kind of model of it. Yeah, really. no, it's yeah. Up. So we've already started working on that. Um, probably information meetings with the civic groups. We try to schedule those. Um, I, I think just in your reviewing of it, if you have a chance, if there's a question that you think, hey, this would be good, the community would like to know. Yeah. Paul, you brought up some good questions there if there's things you know like one on there why reoccurring and not a uh, non-recurring which is what Paul referred to why not have it end in three years and have us go back to that that's the question people will ask um and I think it's an, an important one if I felt like that deficit wasn't going to be there yeah then if there was I guess I would ask anyone in our community do you feel that the state is going to adequately fund us in three years and close that gap then it makes sense but what you know so we can explain that but that's a question if that's not in there we should add that in there so if there's something that comes up let us know we monitor social media um very closely so when i see discussions or other people will forward me i know board members you done like hey jason this discussion is going on yeah then it allows us to add that question to our board and or you know if it's open to the public to answer questions right. on there i find it's yeah complete transparency is the best approach on it and answering the questions and as they come up i i found that's been the best approach once it goes out we can't you know none of us can be involved in any no yes or no, no. correct okay. so that yeah the loss is that so we could just be able to provide Really factual information. Oh, we can't. No, you cannot. Be, we cannot you cannot, endorse. You, cannot, you, cannot you, you can't advocate. Even if we're going off the board. Advocate, advocate. Well, not until you'll be on the board. board. Oh. Yeah. So, so like, you really can't really advocate really either really way. Really you can inform yeah. people, but I, I don't want any of you to be in a position no, like I, I saw the Whitewater board president sitting there in the Facebook discussion boards yeah. trying to yeah. take yeah. all these. Fiery arrows right. and so forth. And there's a lot of reasons you don't want to do that. I'm happy that I handle Correct. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of when you went to the question of the funds, does it mention any of like the ESSER funds? I saw like one time federal funding. Yeah. Does I think there's a question through? on there. Um, Just so like people understand that like that's. What is the ESSER question? Falls what are off. We doing with the money? Okay. What's happening to them? So. Okay. Um, I certainly don't have. No, you're fine. I just thought that the one time federal and I just didn't know if that was. I don't know how many people are watching the COVID I also think as we get on to the community groups to talk about the whole picture, one of the things we have to try to embrace with our community is get them to uh, speak out to the state government about funding issues. You know, it, just knowing that the surplus could, could carry every referendum people have to understand that it's time for them to shake the, the the rattle a little bit and get them to support public education 
at a degree that's that that's adequate you know and and, and I, I don't know how we we get that message to people who will actively send an email make a phone call or whatever to the elected officials but when you start seeing the amount of referendums that are taking place in the state of wisconsin and that they have a surplus um it, it's time that the citizens of the state say, here's how and where you can invest in our state and uh, try to get some advocates, not just for Elkhorn, but for all of public education in Wisconsin to try to uh, get those funding sources more adequate. I think the greater issue is the funding formula. It's just, it's a mess. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's I an agree. absolute mess. Yep. Why should a district five, 10 miles away get right. more right. funds per student than right. another district just because they were, they were expecting right. back in the day? Or why should Milwaukee get 20, exactly. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, but unfortunately, our politics seems to be unfair to change it. But it's really unfortunate. I think there's an opportunity here at a statewide level because typically, having worked in schools for a long time, um, I've seen where proposals have come and gone. And usually, when there's been significant change in school finance, is when there's an opportunity to do it so you don't have winners and losers. Mm -hmm. and, and financially, there's a chance for that to happen, but I, I think you're right. I don't think I don't know, I will. think both sides need to get together and yeah. work it out. And I don't think they're gonna I just don't see it happen. Yeah. But I, I would I'm not blaming either side or the other. I'm just saying right, they right. need to get together no, and come up with a better plan. I, I would never say this is part of the education process, but I think most of the public don't realize that the state gave schools a zero dollar revenue and then an increase for the past two years. Right, right. Um and then the other factor that happens and Believe me, I, I'm all for property tax relief, right. but I wish they would just call it what it is, because when they put money into the school formula, but they don't increase the revenue limits or the aid category, and, and then they go out and they say, we just invested $800 million in the schools, more than we've ever done, but the school didn't get one cent more on the revenue limit, that's not investing in schools. No. Mm -hmm. That's lowering what the property tax contribution needs to be. Great thing. Great thing. But it confuses people. Like, right. What are you talking about? They just gave you record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but no. They did. no, they didn't. No. They did great property tax. I wish they'd they just call it that. Yeah. Instead of look just at all just the just money just we gave to the schools. We gave record dollars to schools. No, we didn't. Um, so I, I don't know, we do need from that communication standpoint, and I have great relationships with our local legislators, and we can have those conversations, but I get that's part of the politicking, and, yeah. and it's hard because in education, we don't, we didn't go into education well. Going into politics, yeah. yeah. But, all right. So it sounds like we've got the direction of marching orders, and any final word, words before we break? Need my high quality cookie? <laughs> yes. Anybody? I'll need all balls for them. Yeah. Th that's fine. I'm I'm trying to behave this year. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> After that, all right. Well, I'm not hearing any other things, so I think we're in motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. No problem, please. Um, Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Donald? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Yes. Thank you.